This is the most common of the, of the tongues that are listed, the languages that are listed. This is available to everybody if you are a believer. If you have Jesus, then you have the Holy Spirit, and this is available to everyone. Divine secrets are being given to your spirit man, and it edifies you by making those godly principles that you read in the Word become yeah. reality in your spirit. The purpose of, of this particular holy language is to enhance your personal Christian walk. This is for you. This is as, as you pray God's perfect will in your life. See, tongues for edification reveals your hidden sin. Then your Holy Spirit empowers you to count it joy. He reveals that hidden sin so you can deal with it. You can get rid of it with his help. He empowers you to count all your junk that you're going through, your persecution as joy, because you know that something good is coming out of it. And then your hindrance, hindrances diminish because if I have hidden sin, and I'm praying for something over here, but I have unforgiveness for my, my brother, the Lord says he can't forgive so, me. Tongues for edification increases your spiritual authority. Once I've gotten rid of my fear, I've gotten rid of my envy, I've gotten rid of my pride, I've gotten rid of my gossiping, whatever is going on, then I have the authority to stand up against the devil. So what is hindering us? There's something stopping us. And Jesus said, it's because you don't have faith. So there's got to be some deeper faith that we don't have. And Jude 20, 21 is, addresses that. It tells us how to get that. It says, you, dear friends, carefully build yourselves up in this most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit, staying right at the center of God's love, keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready for the mercy of our Master Jesus Christ. Praying in that Holy Spirit is how you build up that most holy faith. That faith that we think that we've got a handle on that we don't. That little bit of doubt that we don't even know is there. That's how we build up that most holy People faith. People who love the Lord but just don't know. And that's why I feel like the Holy Spirit is having us teach on this, is you hear people mad at the devil and they're screaming at him in tongues. And, and, they're, and they're angry. He didn't know what you're saying. So you don't have to yell. I mean, it's one thing to be passionate because you're praising the Lord and you're warring. But if you think you're really telling him what for, he doesn't have any more idea of what you're saying than I have any idea of what you're saying. Tongues for interpretation. This is not something that you can just do any time. The first thing we talked about, you can do it any time, in the car, in the doctor's office. And tongues in church like this should be interpreted. If you're in a church and, and every Sunday or every Wednesday someone's up real loud speaking in tongues and no one is interpreting, something's off. Because that no one is edified that way. That, that, this type of tongue is to edify the body. So that's tongues for interpretation. The third one is tongues for deep intercessional It groanings. cannot be expressed in human words because we don't know what it is. This is also not something that you can just do on your own. This isn't something you just, oh, I think I'll just do that. This is something that the Lord gives you. This can be done at home. Sometimes the Lord will just put something on your heart that burdens you and you don't even know why, but you're weeping and you're hurting for someone and, you, and you're praying in your bedroom or you're praying wherever you pray at home. Or that can be done here at the altar. It can happen in the middle of a revival. Um, it's not something you just do it at, at will um, because it's something that God is doing inside of you. And it's not, it's been my experience, it's not necessarily a, um, a pleasant experience uh, because you're, you're, you're carrying someone's burden. You're interceding for something, yeah. someone that's in trouble, and that doesn't feel good. Right. So this isn't something that you typically go around asking for. Mm -hmm. Jesus is interceding for us. We've been chosen by God to become like Jesus. So he's chosen us to plead for others just like Jesus is pleading for us. He's chosen us to intercede in prayer just like Jesus is interceding for us.
The Holy Spirit is who empowers us to stand in the gap in prayer for someone the else. The last one, tongues as a sign for the unbeliever. This is what gets me about the church is that, let's not speak in tongues on Sundays, when 1 Corinthians 14.22 says, so you see that speaking in tongues is a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. The purpose is to bring the unbeliever into the kingdom, for them to hear their language coming from your mouth, and them going, wow, how did you do that? That's what this is.